All right, all right. I'm here. Let me get them started. Get right to it. All right, all right. Let me see here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm running a little late. It's cold out there. Some stuff for you today, Lord mercy. All right. Get right over there. my children of the sun welcome to the open eye on whge 95.3 fm the education advocacy station yes indeed i'm patrice gibbs your third eye optometrist right here the second show of the new year how about that all right all right because i told you about the new year last last week on january 1st and the Actual New Year actually starts in March. All right. Look it up. Look it up. Or look at last week's show. Mm hmm You know, I look at uh, some things on YouTube and on different social medias and on the news. And, you know, you see, more money is spent on boob jobs and Viagra than Alzheimer's research. tells you our society's priorities. By 2040, the elderly will have perky boobs, stiff willies, and no freaking idea why. That's true. Jeez Louise. Mm. Breaking news. The murderers of Ahmaud Arbery have been sentenced. They already been convicted. Travis and Gregory McMichael were sentenced to life plus 20 years without the possibility of parole. That works for me. William Brody Bryan was sentenced to life without possibility of parole. So they're all going to be in jail for the rest of their lives. But they'll be alive. A Mark Aubrey is dead. All right. Now, if you, hey, hey, Bessie. Oh, I want to apologize to my listeners for yesterday. Yesterday, I had planned a special broadcast with a uh, special guest. And unfortunately, the guest didn't make it. And so it didn't happen. And that's okay. Moving right along, moving right along. As you know, I am a student of history. All right. Did you know 
When scholars discover a prince's body noticing his black features, this is in Kemet, as we is known as uh, today as Egypt, noticing his black features, they lie and claim that he was a foreign prince. There's no evidence of him being a foreigner. His name was Mahepri, Mahepri, which is a comedic name. And he was a comedic prince buried in the royal necropolis, the Valley of the Kings, with all pharaohs. See, they are not just whitewashing our history here in America. They're trying, and they had been for centuries, trying to whitewash our history. You see some of the things that's going on in Egypt. Now, I've been to Egypt, lived there. And the disrespect that the Arabs who now live and control Egypt. The disrespect they have for the monuments. You go over by the pyramids and you find a bunch of hustlers trying to run game on you. Some of the ancient monuments, some of the uh, uh, ancient frescoes that are on the walls and in, in tombs and what have you. They're lightening them up. Remember what I told you. Egyptology is not a science. It is an information control apparatus. That's exactly what it is. This is the open eye. And the feelings expressed on the open eye are those of the host, guests, and contributors. And do not reflect the Good morning, Jardea. What's up, brother? WHDE 95.3 FM oh. for our sponsor, the Delaware okay. Center for Homeless Vets. Oh, Any content there. provided by Open Eyes hosts, guests, or contributors okay. are theirs and are not intended to align any religion, ethnic group, company, or individual. WHGE 95.3 FM, the Open Eye. All right, all right. As you know, I like to <clears throat> excuse me, share some of our history with you. I want to tell you about Junius George Groves. He lived from 1859 to 1925. Junius George Groves was a successful, self-educated farmer, landowner, and entrepreneur. Became one of the most prosperous African-American men in the early 20th century. He was born enslaved on April 12, 1859 in Green County, Kentucky. His parents were Martin Groves and Mary Anderson Groves. Two, de two decades later, as a freedman, possessing 90 cent, Groves made his way to eastern Kansas during the time of the ex exodusters movement of ex-slaves from the south. Groves began farming by sharecropping near Edwardsville, Kansas in 1880. He married Matilda E. Stewart of Kansas City, Missouri. Within a few years, they began purchasing their own land. Much of Groves' success was due to his 46 years of devotion to, sci to the science of agriculture. He earned the title Potato King of the World in 1902 for growing the most bushels of potatoes per acre than anyone else in the world up to that point. The couple's 12 surviving children out of 14 births helped with the farm and family holdings. Being the son of a country boy, my father was one of 11. Yes, and they grew up doing chores before they went to school. Besides producing potatoes on his own farms, Groves by 1900 bought and shipped potatoes, fruits, vegetables extensively throughout the United States, Mexico, and Canada. The family also owned and operated a general merchandise store in Edwardsville, possessed stock 
in mines in Indian Territory and Mexico, stock in Kansas banks, and majority interest in the Kansas City Casket and Embalming Company. Junior's Groves co-founded the State Negro Business League and later served as its president. He also founded the Pleasant Hill Baptist Church Society in 1886. He was also elected secretary of the Call Valley Potato Association in 1890 and vice president of the Sunflower State Agricultural Association in 1910, as well as co-founder of both organizations in those years. This is Albert Dude, man. Yeah? A junior's grows surpassed financial parity with most whites in contemporary Kansas and in the process combated, combated racism by example and by, by providing economic opportunities to blacks and whites with a particular emphasis on uplifting his race. During the busy farming, farming season, for example, Groves employed up to 50 mostly black laborers. He founded Grove Center, an African-American community near Edwardsville in the early 1900s. He also established a golf course for African-Americans, perhaps the first in the United States. Junior's Groves was one of the wealthiest African-Americans in the nation by the first decade of the 20th century. His, old, his holdings were estimated to be worth $80,000 in 1904 and 300000 by 1915. The Groves family mansion, a 22-room brick home, complete with electric lights, two telephones, and hot and cold running water in, in all of the bedrooms, was the largest in the area and had its own railroad spur. Junior's Groves died in Evansville in 1925. In 2007, Groves was honored by his descendants, the Votaw Community, uh, the Votaw College Museum, an organization honoring the Exodusters and their descendants, and the city of Edwardsville. He was also inducted into the Bruce W. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center Hall of Fame in nearby Kansas City, Missouri. George, I mean, Junius George Groves. You want to learn more about him? Look him up. Yes, indeed. Graham Rising, Tracy. Yes, indeed, Queen. Glad to have you on there. Thank you for, for tuning in. All right, all right. Oh, I got some more for you. Don't you worry. Oh, yeah. Let's see what I do with that. Oh, yeah. Oh. Now, we lost a couple of people here recently. Okay. Uh, one, I'm going to hold off until my partner in consciousness gets in. And we're going to talk about uh, what this man came to represent. But first, I'm going to commemorate, and I'm going to talk more about this uh, with No Saroma, who's on his way in. Okay. Uh, yesterday, we lost a giant, Sidney Portier, who paved the way for black actors and films, died yesterday at 94. The first black performer to win an Academy Award for Best Actor for Louis of the Field. He once said he felt as if he was representing 15 to 18 million people with every move he made. That's because Sidney was very important to us. You know, he was one of our shining black princes. He was an actor, movie star, who, how can I say, mm, represented us in the best light. Sidney Poitier, uh, the film he, like I said, the film he won the Academy Award for, which 
I personally didn't think was his best performance was Lilies of the Field. You know, actually it was one of those Black Angel uh, you know, Black Angel portrayals, you know, saving white people and this, that, and the other. You have to see it. Actually, it is a good movie, though. Now, Sidney Poitier, his portrayal of resolute heroes in films like To Serve With Love, In the Heat of the Night, and others, established him as Hollywood's first black matinee idol. Oh, it was a movie that he did with Tony Curtis, where they were chained together. I can't remember the name of that movie. Maybe you know Saroma can help me out with that. All right. Big up's cousin Michael. Yes, indeed, it's my cousin down Atlantic City. And of course, my brother Vaughn. Big ups. You know, uh, like I said, he died in 94. He died at home. And what have you. And that's where we're going to take a quick break while I know Saroma finished getting us set up here. Play some music. Wait a minute. Uh, all right, all right. WHGE 95.3 FM, the open eye. WHGE 95.3 FM, the advocacy education station. Uh, something I'm interested. Welcome back, Raheem. Welcome back, brother. Good to, good to have you back on the air. Raheem came back on the air yesterday. Yes, indeed. After about with COVID. Right, right. Yes, indeed. Yeah, got yeah. Good morning, No Saroma. Good morning, bro. What's good? What's all good? Right, all right, all right. How you doing, brother? Y'all got good morning, world. All right, all right. What was your favorite Cindy Poitier movie? My favorite Cindy Poitier movie was... Uh, and I just watched it one, too. Um, well, what was it about? Because I'm pretty good at movies. When the dude stole the diamonds and they went up in the mountains... And he he had to go get them, and then the dude they he he actually caught up to the guy, and they robbed. He was robbing the people, and he took he brought her out the house with the blanket on. Both all of them, both of them was under the blanket, and they, the sniper couldn't shoot him because he didn't know which one would be shoot. Dang, you got me on that one. I don't know that one. Oh, yeah. it, <laughs> How about in the heat of the night? That's oh, one yeah, of my favorites. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. hey, you know my favorite scene in that what? was when he was in the uh, uh, greenhouse. Uh -huh. With the sheriff and uh, 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 the white supremacist bigot, uh -huh. who was like the leader of the town. I don't know if he was a judge. I don't remember right, exactly. Right. But uh, Mr. Tibbs, Detective Tibbs, uh -huh. as, which was the character Sidney Poitier was playing, he said something slick to this racist old bastard. Oh, and that right. fool slapped him. <laughs> and Sidney Poitier backhand slapped him so hard it made him cry. It was, oh. oh, yeah. Oh, man, did I love that. He slapped fire out of his ass. Yeah, he did. Ooh. That was who the hell's the Oh, yo. I, I mean, I ain't really, I wasn't watching Sidney Poitier back in the day. I knew about him. He mm -hmm. was like, a historian for like the black people, you right? Know what right I'm saying? Like a historical he, figure. Yeah, he's breaking barriers in right, the film right. industry. You know what like I'm saying? Like I said, he was the first black man to win an Academy oh, Award as best yeah. actor. Yep. Yeah. So, and during that time, I was, I wasn't in the TV. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. I was on a on also yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, like I said, you know, um, he was a pioneer, and of course, his movies were Bill Cosby. My favorite mm -hmm. one of them 
Oh yeah, 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 let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it oh, again. Man. Bill Cosby and um uh uh JJ. Yeah, JJ. Uh, JJ uh, was Jimmy in Walker. The, he was in one of their movies. They, yeah, that was the one. Let's do it again. Oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 John Amos was in it. Yo, it, it was. Oh, that was all right, man. That was, was so great many. Movie. It was so many black uh, influences back then that was for the people mm -hmm. and 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 in their positions that they were holding mm -hmm. and that's what made them people extraordinary and yes indeed you know what i'm saying yes, and, and we don't have that character of celebrity anymore not really not no. i mean no you not have on that level. you just named seven six of them in one movie now, how about now that? you can't about pick that? one out. Right. You understand? That's that's what's mm -hmm. going on. Good point there, you, you, you dig what I'm saying? Yes, this I do. Is, this is where the attack is at. Mm -hmm. When our kids and our own, own our, our age right now don't know who you can pick out to say doing this for our people. Right. This is the problem with that. That's where yeah. my problem lies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we have Denzel and Eddie and uh, uh, Wesley Snipes and Jamie Foxx and what have you, okay? What's the last movie that they did that was a reflective uh, growth process for our community and our people? Any one of them. I mean, that's giving that you... That's, <laughs> yeah, that's just giving you off the top of your head. That's, that's what's going yep, on. Yep, I mean, yep, you, you, know. got, you get dead the greatest in a second. They'll mm -hmm. bring a slavery movie out in a minute. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. that's keeping us in our that same mindset. Right. And, and, and that's, that's wrong to me. You right. know what I'm saying? Because you know what? I mentioned Denzel. Okay? Probably Denzel's most significant role we played Malcolm X, okay? I, if I remember, he was nominated for an Academy Award and didn't win. I'm, I don't, I'm, I can't say for sure. I might be wrong on that. But what he did win an Academy Award for was a movie called Training Day, where he played a villain. Right. Okay? And I don't think neither one of the movies can compare to the movie Debate. Because in the movie debate, that that was showing the uh, educational level of our people mm -hmm. that yeah, that's we, a great we movie. can acclaim and and any any process, any age, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And that's not that's what the, the, the projection should be. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's what the main focus should be pushed, mm -hmm. not the. Yo, um, uh, what do you call that? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm King Kong. Right, know? a hostile black man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Hey, that's that's. That's not now, necessarily true. I grew up, you know. I grew up. Uh, I was born in the sixties. Grew up in the sixties and seventies. Seventies right. was my teenage years. Now the early seventies was the era of black exploitation films. Okay, mm -hmm. you had Superfly, because you had Pam Greer and Foxy Brown and Corky, and you know. Uh, Oh, I could, I could name so many of these movies. Davis Town, um, Robert Townsend. You had a bunch of people that was... Well, Robert Townsend was in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm talking the about 80s. the exploitation movies oh, okay. in the 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that brings me to... Superfly and all yep. that. Okay. And that brings me to this gentleman that I'm ready to bring up. Who? Max Julian, who died oh, last Julian. week. He died last week? Yeah, 80... I think it's like 88 years old and what happened. Right. Now, Max right. Julian right. was known for... The movie The Mac. Mm -hmm. Richard Pryor was in that movie as well uh -huh. as his partner. Okay, now in the movie The Mac, Max Julian played a pimp named Goldie. Right. Okay. And if you watch the movie, this was actually an indictment of that whole uh, uh, lifestyle the pimp and uh, 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 prostitutes and what have you. But what happened with that influence was you got you had a lot of cats when I was uh, preteen and a teenager that wanted to be pimps because they saw the Mac, you know, and they could run that game down and get that girl out there and get her mind and get her out there to get that money for them. Okay, and, and they took and pumped that movie. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Now. I still know a lot of people that, and, and, and it even has become part of our lexicon, part of our language. You know, if you're doing something 
you know, good or slick. Oh, you big pimping, brother. Uh -huh. Oh, you pimping. Right. Oh, you pimping. All right? Right. Now, I came up around hustlers. And some of them were pimps. Okay? A lot of them weren't. And what a lot of them taught me was to have a level of animosity toward pimps. Okay? Mm -hmm. I can remember one old hustler telling me that he had no respect for pimps. Okay, because they were parasites that earned their money on the back of a whore who had low self-esteem and uh, 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 insecurity about who she was and had the wrong idea about what love was. I call that usury. That's what my boy B said. <laughs> That's usury. Yeah. The government do that to us all the time. Yeah, it do. But, you know, the thing is, doing it to each other. Right. And this ideal that pimps are to be admired, I find that absolutely sickening. What do you think of that? No, I mean, everybody, you can't knock a hustle. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, to say, yo, that ain't right, I mean, yeah, morally it's not right, but you don't know why they do it for whatever reason they be to take care of their two-year-old or get whatever they need. I mean, reasons is reasons, you know what I'm saying? So I yeah. never really put, it wouldn't be something that I would do. You know what no, I'm saying? Yeah, I heard that. So, I, I mean, that. that's how I feel about it. They, they, I heard that. And like I said, you know, and I understand what you're saying about, you know, not knocking, knocking the hustle and this, that, and the other. But like I said, I have a very low opinion myself of pimps. And I've seen the brutality of pimps up close and personal. I, and, you know, I'm going to go ahead and relate this story. One of the worst things I've ever seen was in the Bronx. We were up there hustling ourselves. We weren't hustling women. You know, weren't pimping or nothing like that. But the people that we were actually doing business with were pimps. And we were in this bar that was frequented by pimps near the point. A lot of you heard of the point. That's uh, the stroll in the Bronx. Okay, okay. One of the biggest... Uh, places made famous by the documentary that was H on HBO, Pimps and Hoes. Okay. Okay. Well, this prostitute comes in and she gives her pimp some money. Well, she was short. And this wasn't the first time that she was short. Come to find out, she's actually stealing money from him, not turning in all her money. Mm. That's a bad thing to do with a pimp. And which, what he did, along with one of his fellow pimps, was he held, they held this girl down. And sewed the lips of her vagina <gasps> together with needle and thread. Come I on. never heard such screaming, such horror in my life, but what they did to that girl, you know? And, you know, that's the the brutality, man, you know. Uh, of course, another influence on our society, as far as pimps go, was Iceberg Slim, who really exposed the game to people with, who became really a great author and exposed the game to society and what it was really about, mm -hmm. you know, and... For that, I do have a level of respect for Iceberg Slim. And for those of you that have never heard of Iceberg Slim, there are documentaries on the brother. And uh, like I said, he's written several, he wrote several books and what have you. Now, that might be something that you might want to look into to have an understanding of that lifestyle. Iceberg Slim. This is... WHDE 95.3 FM, the open eye. I'm Patrice Gibbs. I'm no Saroma in the building. Good, yeah. sir. Yeah, I got it. Yo, what's good? We finally made it, got up, set up, and everything. Thank y'all for tuning in. Yo, Tracy Vaughn, and yo, Natalie, what's good? And yo, Bill, what's happening? Lamont. Robert, hey yo, you know how we get down. We doing what we do. You know what I mean? For real. 
Hey, hey, yo, Pat be banging him upside the head, I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, yo, I actually seen Iceberg Slim. Yo, <laughs> that was serious. Yeah, I got the documentary. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I think I got it from you, one of those documentaries. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. It, it's the way he talks. What, what? This huge. Hello, what, how you doing? This huge. Hope you're enjoying the show. That's what's up. Yeah, we're coming. Uh... She says she is. Great show. Great topic. All right, all right. That's what's up. All right. Yeah. The phone lines are open. What's that number, Nosaroma? 844-944-3953. Call us up. Let us know what's on your mind and what you're thinking. Yes, Because we do want to talk to you. Yeah. Don't be scared. As or WHDE 95.3 FM. Yeah, okay. Nearly one year ago. Uh huh. Whole year? Whole year. A whole year ago. Thursday, January 6th. It was a year. Okay. Not nearly one year ago. One year ago. Actually, over a year at this point. Oh, okay. A violent bomb broke into the United States Capitol in an effort to halt the certification of the electoral vote and overturn the 2020 election in favor of Donald Trump. The insurrection was unsuccessful, but its echoes continue to reverberate today. Many in the Republican Party attempt to deny, minimize, or normalize the legacy of the attempted coup, while investigators in both the Justice Department and Congress continue to dig into exactly what happened that day. Let me tell you what happened before that day. Donald Trump and Republican leaders met with the leaders of the planned insurrection right. to make sure that this thing took place. Okay? Now, the, the, the crazy thing to me is, you know, the fact that these insurrectionists are not being punished to the full extent of the law. Right, so they're giving getting, them slaps on the wrist. That's what they do. That's what they find in, in that... That was treason. It's punishable, punishable by, by death. Mm. If that was black people, they would have been dead on the steps. That's so, what I, I mean, was coming to. Definitely. Do. If you see the injustice in this, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm saying. That's that's How can you respect them, period, mm -hmm. even because they letting this go? Right. You know? That's what it that, is. And that's crazy. Yeah. But this is, this, is, this is white supremacy in practice. We get killed for walking down the street mm. on not bothering nobody. Right. And they... Treason and treason and didn't nothing yeah. happened to him. Smack on the wrist. Uh, what? 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 You know what I'm saying? I mean, what? What? Punishments is ridiculous that they giving them out. It is big time, big man. You said that absolutely right. That's you crazy. Know? A black guy that been sitting on her at her desk. What's her name? Lisa, Lisa Pelosi. Yeah, Lisa yeah. Pelosi. Oh, desk or whatever. Uh, listen. They would have found everybody that was black to tell on who that was sitting on that, mm -hmm. at that desk. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's something Come that, on, like man. you said, you know, if these people had been black, because remember, <clears throat> uh, it was a couple of years before, you know, or whatever the period was, where Black Lives Matter marched on Washington, and the cops and were out there. And it was peaceful. And, and they, they was still peaceful. did the dirt to them. And they did the dirt. Yeah, they give them the business. Hey. They gave them the business. Shooting them with rubber bullets yep. and all this stuff. Messing in the face. Off. In the face. Now, think about that, yeah. man. You know? And like I said, you know, uh, when they did it, they were out there long before the actual First of peaceful, all, peaceful, up. For them to peaceful protest it, took place. Huh? For them to even say it, the, the, the uh, insurrection, mm -hmm. they, they knew about this day before it was going on. Yeah. So why they didn't have the people out? Why wasn't the black people? Like they did when the black people exactly. showed up. Right, right. I mean, this this is what goes on. Yeah. You know? You know? But let's, let's, let's relate this to American right. history. Okay. Okay. So, oh, okay. Because the Civil War, okay, which was started. By insurrectionists in the South. Right. Nothing but a bunch of terrorists. Right. Who went to war and they, they you know, they want to whitewash it and say, because the states' rights. States' rights to do what? To enslave people. That's what they went to war over. Okay? 
That's what they went to war over. Now, after the Civil War, all right, they were allowed just to go on back home. They were traitors to the country, and they were allowed just to go back home. I mean, their, their leaders, uh, 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 I forget the president, who was his, uh, Jefferson Davis and, and uh, uh, Robert Lee Lee, right. you know, they weren't home. They should have been. They were traitors to the country. They were responsible for the death of millions of Americans. And they let them go back home. Mm -hmm. See, because this is the mindset. Let me tell you about something that happened before the Civil War. Mm -hmm. What? Southern Congressman Preston Brooks savagely beat Northern Senator Charles Sumner in the halls of Congress as tensions rose over the expansion of slavery. He beat him with a cane. That's right. Preston Brooks, all right, okay, when the controversial Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854 was passed, okay, popular sovereignty was applied within the two new territories, and people were given the right to decide the slavery issue by vote. Because the act nullified the Missouri Compromise of 1820, the debate over slavery intensified. Northerners were incensed that slavery could again resurface in an area where it had been banned for 30 years. When violence broke out in, Can in the Kansas Territory, the issue became central in Congress. On May 19, 1854, about, ten, uh, about six years before the Civil War, Massachusetts Senator Charles Sumner, an ardent abolitionist, began a two-day speech on the Senate floor in which he decried the crime against Kansas and blasted three of his colleagues by name, one of whom, South Carolina, Carolina Senator Andrew T. T. Butler, who was elderly and sick and absent from the proceedings at the time. Hmm. Butler's cousin, Representative Preston Brooks of South Carolina, who had a history of violence, took it upon himself to defend the honor of his kin. Well in the cane he used for injuries he incurred in a duel over a political debate before, Brooks entered the Senate chamber, attacked Sumner at his desk. He took that cane and he beat the holy hell out of him. And guess what happened? He became an instant hero in the South. Wow. Matter of fact, supporters sent him many replacement canes because he broke his cane. Now, of course, <laughs> in the North, he was vilified. <coughs> but the, ex the incident exemplifies the growing hostility from the South and what happened. Right. Sumner did not return to the, to the Senate for three years. The one that he didn't kill him. Three years, beat him with a cane. And my man was out for three years. All right? Nothing happened to him. This is the mindset. See, this is, this is what white privilege is. It's something you need to understand about it. White privilege does not mean you're going to get something for free and this, that. No. What white privilege means is that you don't face the boundaries, okay? It's simple. It's no punishment. Right. You don't face the boundaries and punishments. And that's where the people has to take the take it into their own hands. Right. You because got, of your skin. You got fifty people outside of your house now and mm -hmm. then they burn your house down and all your kids in it and everything and treat you like you don't you treat them. Mm -hmm. It's a difference now. Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, but the mentality that, you know, we have, we're not that type of people. You know no, what I'm saying? Not. So that that would that would never happen. Mm -hmm. That's not in our blood. The, and in our DNA to just hate, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, I mean... And, and I'm glad you said that. It's not in our DNA to just hate. Okay? We hate ourselves more than we hate Man. anybody else. So, you know? You know See, that's now, never really talked about in health as a mental issue in our community that has been... We've been fraudulently, you know, misled. Mm -hmm. You know? And 
fraud, it has no limitation. No, it doesn't. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. our ancestors that y'all manipulated back then to do this work to bring America together, mm -hmm. we as black people has been frauded, period, from mm -hmm. our ancestors. Listen to Nosa Romo on that. You dig what I'm saying? So Listen to that. Lawsuit. Okay. It, that's that's never fraud, never ha don't have a statute of limitations. So mm -hmm. that's what now, we have to start check talking Check this out. This, is, this relates to what you said about we fought for people. Okay, during the civil rights movement, right? During the sixties, okay, black people suffered all kind of, uh, 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 you know, injustices and pressure and abuse, mainly abuse. Okay, our children were firebombed in the church. Okay, our children were fire holes. Our men, women, and children were murdered, and what have you. And we were fighting for the rights of everybody, all people of color, okay? And as soon as the civil rights movement had a measure of success and things opened up for all people of color, including black people, even though we as a group were still under pressure, right? Those other groups, Asians and, 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 and Hispanics and what have you, okay? They stepped right over our bodies and, you know, walked through the doors that we opened and, 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 and made advancements for themselves and looked at us and said, oh, y'all didn't get these advancements that we got? Oh, oh well, y'all with you. Now, okay, we're always talking about the coalition. I better not hear another damn black Ooh. person talking about we got to stop Asian hate. Oh, that's racist, Pat. How could you say that? I'm going to tell you how I could say that. Now, before there was Brown versus Board of Education, mm -hmm. you learn something. Get, a, get your notepad out, as a matter of fact. Okay. Okay. Before Brown versus uh, the Board of Education, which opened, which ended school, supposedly, ended school uh, segregation. Okay. In 1927, in Georgia, a Chinese family, okay, sued the school district because they would not allow their daughter to attend the all-white school. Now, you would think that, oh, well, yeah, that was a heroic thing to do, to sue them. You know? And this was called the, uh, oh, what is it? I got it here. I got it here. Oh, what was it called? The Gong Lum versus the Board of Education. Okay. All right. Now, these are it, the Chinese immigrants led the first fight to desegregate schools in Jim Crow South. All right. And this sounds like I said, this sounds like this was really a good thing. But here was their argument. Here was the Chinese family's argument and their lawyer. We want the right not to be contaminated by going to school with blacks as well as with whites do. That was not their uh, a fight to open up the schools and desegregate the schools for everybody. That was a fight for them to say, don't include us with blacks. We don't want, listen to that language. We don't want to be contaminated right. by blacks. In our education. So the next time you, and don't be in my presence and say that crap about uh, stop Asian hate. Stop Asian hate against us. They all turned against us in some form. You got that right. Because yeah. their lives have, was mattering at the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, you were doing you with us. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going over with y'all. Mm -hmm. And that's the way they, that's what they all did. That's why we are the bottom, bottom. Right. Always. Because all of them had got together to do that. That's right. So you got to understand that, mm -hmm. that we're not just only have a problem with this person. We have a problem with them all with in them some all. sense. That's right. Because they didn't use their moral ethic to go, that ain't right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yep. That's crazy. That's crazy. Did you learn something today? WACE 95.3 FM. You did good. It's right, 
Yo, what's good? Like Dr. Clark said, we have no friends. And that's right. We ain't got no friends, baby. We ain't got no friends. <laughs> uh huh. Guess who coming to dinner? Say what? Yeah, that was one of the movies. Oh, okay. And, and oh, I yeah, Bill Cosby. For a <laughs> nah, guess who coming to dinner? I mean, dinner? Not, uh, Sydney Portier. Yeah, that was Sydney Portier. Yeah. And I didn't mention it for Andre, a reason. what's up, Lou? You know what? Uh, you know about guess who's coming to dinner? Oh, uh, yeah, and it was a black man with, with the white girl. Right. Uh-huh. Right. I, I, <laughs> we ain't on that. I left that shit out. <laughs> I'm damn sure you did. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> someone who knows how to calm them down. They bring some racist cop in there to beat the child down that's already traumatized. Jeez Louise. Now who fault is that? Is that the company the for not properly training the officer that they put into the school that has all these kids he has to protect? Mm -hmm. Or is it the the person himself for not taking the more responsibility to go that this is another human being and it's a kid. Right. Right. I mean now I go with that. Alright, because we we gotta stop blaming it on the training. Because they don't have to be trained not to abuse white people. Right. We gotta stop blaming it on something else. It's them. It's, that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's what that's why black students represent a considerable share of school related arrests. All right? And don't get it mixed. Yeah, I mentioned Brown versus Board of Education earlier. Mm -hmm. Black students are still segregated. Okay? Now, the board, like I said, Brown versus Board of Education and other civil rights era cases and measures to legally thwart education segregation has done little to nothing to quell the issue in reality. I've told you that several times. School D That's said... That's like Dr. Clark said. Dr. Clark said they fighting for the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they fighting for, you know, the segregation. Mm -hmm. and we need our own. That's we, right. They should have been fighting to have our own. We didn't really need to be this... The mm. segregated. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We, you we want to learn because... our own culture. We want to learn our own mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. You know, they learn their own history and try to force it on us. So, right. I mean. See, we went too far with desegregation. Okay? Yes, desegregation should have opened up things like that uh, been uh, the, the right last to get. thing, though. Once, but once let's check it out, though. Once, what I'm saying, right? right. All right. It should have opened up things like. You know, the right to go in the store or the right to eat at a lunch counter or the right to ride on a bus or the right to uh, a uh, bank. Yeah. Humanity. Uh, humanity. I call that humanity. Right. Where okay. We all can get along mm -hmm. in this one spot. Mm -hmm. We all got to eat. So we, we all most likely going to go through this supermarket. And, and, yeah. And, and, yeah. And that's all well and good. Right. Okay. But we went too far and we misunderstood what Dr. King was about. Okay. 
because what we did was we ran away from our own. Okay? One of the major examples of that that I often bring up is what? Is black, is baseball. Baseball? Baseball. Okay. Okay? Because Jackie Robinson, you know, got in the major leagues and what have you. Okay? Mm -hmm. We gave up a multi-million dollar business that in, that in, encompassed the greatest players probably on the planet in baseball. Right. The Negro League, the ba the Black uh, Baseball League, or the Negro right. League, black as it was Negro called. Multi-million dollar business. Right. Gave it up to get one black man in the major leagues to play with whites. See, we, we, we have to stop even now comparing quality with white. We are quality. Understand that. But not only that. We don't think business, right? You understand, mm -hmm. and we have to think business. Mm -hmm. That that you said it. It was a, a now. It's a trillion dollar business. Mm -hmm. That they buy and sell hot dogs and they sell beer and, and popcorn mm -hmm. and all this stuff at them baseball games. Do you That's know how right. much these baseball games make a game? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money. That's right. Our, it generates a lot of right. money. And that was our income, mm -hmm. our That's community right. income mm -hmm. that. And that's that's what I mean by they weren't thinking on a business global level no. like all the others are. That's right. You know. Well, we were until integration happened. Okay. And then, like I said, you know, a lot of us got caught up in that. We're now part of the um, uh, major society, and we don't need to do. And we ran away from each other. Right. I understand. I understand. Okay. You. And, and because I saw it when I first left home in the Air Force. Right. And I saw people who were raised in a very strict household. Okay. And as soon as they got freedom, they went buck wild. Right. You know, some ladies, some young ladies became promiscuous right. because they weren't allowed to date and what have you. You had some young men that got involved in things that they couldn't, couldn't handle, gambling and messing up their money. You know, well, when you become when you, when you become grown and mm -hmm. you become make, be, to make your own decisions, mm -hmm. you want to do some of the things that you weren't you know, allowed that you weren't allowed to do. Yeah, well, know. that's why I related to right. You know, our people being contained in that deep oppression right. of segregation and Jim Crow and black codes. Right. As soon as we got free, we ran off and went a little crazy. Right. You know, so I understand. We got wound back down and wound, wound back down. down. We got to all come calm down. Right. Yeah. And look, I don't, I'm not impressed by your sneakers, sister. I'm not impressed by your Louis Vuitton pocketbook. Right. I'm not impressed by that. You want to impress me? Show me how you went in business and pulled somebody up in our community. I mean, the inner shows you. You want to impress me? Show me your inner. Show me what right. it is that you carry inside your brain. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We don't think like that. We look at exactly what you say. Right. If I see it and I like it, it must be good. Yeah. yeah no, that's yeah, not true. You know, that ego-driven consumerism. All right? Remember this. We live in a capitalist society. And in a capitalist economy, okay, there is a required aspect of that that someone be exploited. Right. Well, at the bottom of that economic exploitation are black people. Understand that. Understand how what the solution is. All right. Don't get caught up in ego-driven consumerism because poverty is a social construct. It's not a necessary thing. What's his name? Jeff Bezos. Is that his name? What? The Amazon dude. My, yeah, yeah. He got one hundred and seventy-four billion dollars. Okay, there are 77 billion people in the world or something like that. He can get everybody a billion dollars and still have a hundred billion dollars left over. Poverty is on purpose. It's a social construct. And we're at the bottom of that exploitation. Don't get it mixed. We're going to go in deeper to uh, the 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 statistics on how structural racism impacts our people.
and in in labor shows and what have you. Right. Because believe it or not, brother, <laughs> when we come to the end of the show here. I would always click fast. Always click fast. For real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it always click fast. Uh, so that's what I mean. Oh, oh, I got to mention this too. There's a 13 year old named Jada Williams uh -huh. whose essay compared Douglas's story, Frederick Douglass, about being kept from reading with her own experience struggling in school. Oh, wait till I tell you about this. I'm going to wow. get into it next week. I'm going to make sure I bring this one up next week. Okay? Because and that's trying to take thing. our history out of the curriculum. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's crazy. Oh, yeah. That's what they're trying to do. That's word. Now, listen. What? Having been a slave for 250 years, black people were not left to their own devices. They were terrorized. That's one of the reasons that we haven't been able to to economically advance. In the Deep South, a second slavery rule. In the North, legislatures, mayors, civic associations, banks, and citizens all colluded to pin black people in the ghettos where they were overcrowded, overcharged, and undereducated. You know what? It's expensive to be poor and black. Businesses discriminated against black people or giving them the worst jobs in the worst wages. Police still are brutalizing black people in the street. And the notion that black lives, black bodies, and black wealth were rifle targets remain deeply rooted in the broader society. Now we have half stepped our way, half stepped away from our long centuries of despoiling, promising never again. But we still are haunted. It is though we have run, run up a credit card bill and having pledged to charge no more, remain befuddled that the balance doesn't seem to disappear. The effects of that balance, interest accruing daily, are all around us. It's called systemic racism. And how we run up a bill and we ain't been paid for the work we did yet. How about that? That's that. Shoo. Yeah. Destiny determines who enters your life, but you decide who stays. Therefore, value those who value you and don't treat those as a priority. We treat you as an option. There's no Close around around. in the building. Yes, WHGE 95.3, Mr. Gibbs, open night, ready to go. Every Saturday, 11 to 12. You dig? <laughs> Right, all right. Yo, what's good? Thank y'all for tuning in. Hey, yo, Will, what's happening? Yo, most definitely facts. That's all we drop over here. It's fact. You know what I'm saying? So, if you want to know something, then give us some stuff to talk about. This is what we do. So, if you want to talk to us, talk to us about what you want to talk to us about. We we'll bring it to the air, bring it to the uh, live, all of that. Hey, yo. Here we go. I want to say thanks again to everybody tuning in on my man, Mr. Gibbs, you know, live. Yeah, I see. Hey, Mr. Whittle, what's happening, bro? Uh, Yo, I need to link up with you anyway. I got some plans for you. You dig what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I see you, Sister Lorraine. Yes, indeed. Oh, yeah. I see you. De Who's that, Deanna? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you learned something. Tune in next week. You will definitely learn something again. As were the open eye. Patrice Gibbs. All right, all right. Mostly warm is spinning on all platforms. Spotify. Okay. Okay. Oh, brother, brother uh, Whittle is down in the A. Oh, oh yeah, all right, then. Yeah. I definitely got a link with you, boy. That's very good. All right, all right. Jadea, Vaughn, Lorraine, of course, um, Bessie. Uh huh, Natalie. I know who you are, Natalie. That's word. All right, all right. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. This is the open eyes.